or praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the spirit of discipline. The spirit of discipline. Okay, the spirit of discipline. Um, let's open up with the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, 32. Let's read that. John chapter 8, verse 32. You know what? Start at verse 1. Start at verse 1. John chapter 8, verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Christ came to the Mount of Olives. Go ahead. Come on. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. What did he do? And he sat down and taught them. He sat down and taught them. It says, early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him to do what? To learn. And he sat down and taught them. So jump down to verse 30. Now watch this. Come on. Verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. As he spake these words that he taught them, many believed on him. Come on. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You see what he was telling the Jews that believed on him? It says what? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. They believe. They be, why did they believe then? Why would they believe in the things that we should say? Jump up to verse 27. Watch this. John chapter 8 verse 27. Mm -hmm. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. You are speaking about the, the most high God. What? Go ahead. Read. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I'm the Christ, the Savior of Israel, right? And that I do nothing of myself. He did because he's not the one that sent, he didn't send himself down here. The most that God sent him, right? But as my father hath taught me. As my father hath done what? But as my father hath taught me. As my father hath taught me. Because he was taught by the most High God. As he was taught by the Most High God, go ahead. What did he do? I speak these things. You see that thing? I speak these things, meaning I teach these things. Go ahead. And he that sent me is with me. Meaning the Father was always with Christ. Go ahead. The Father had not left me alone. Mm -hmm. For I do always those things that please him. He says, for I do always those things that please him. Because why he was disciplined in God's law. Go ahead. As he spake these words, many believed on him. As he spake the, the words that the most that God taught him, many believed on him. Go ahead. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, mm -hmm. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You see what he's telling them? He says, if you continue in my word, not you learn it, you understand, and you leave. You, and you draw back. No. It says, if you continue in my word. I guess they believe what he said. He says, but not only must you believe, but you must continue in the things that I've taught you. Then are you my disciples indeed. Because a disciple is a student. They are disciplined in what? The laws of the most High like God. Because that's what Christ taught. He taught them God's commandments. Okay? Read that again, verse 31. Come on. John chapter 8, verse 31. Read then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, mm -hmm. if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, you will become my disciples. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You see what he's telling them? Is that the only, the only time when you will know the truth is if you continue in the truth. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Get that in um, Second John. The only way they're going to know the truth is if they continue in the truth. Let's get the truth real quick. Get that in Psalms, okay? Get that in Psalms real quick. What is the truth? Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the what? Thy law is the truth. 
and thy law is the truth. Now go back. Now give me, now give me second, give me third John verse one. Give me third John and verse one. Okay, third John verse one. Third John verse one. The elder unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Whom I love in the truth. So guess what? Now, now see, John was writing to Gaius, okay? And both of them were in the truth together. Go ahead. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Read. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. You see that thing? That the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. So the truth must be in you. Go ahead. Even as thou walkest in the truth. So that you can walk in the truth. So the truth must be in you. For the truth to be in you, you must be taught the truth. Once you are taught the truth, you apply the truth. The truth becomes in you. If you are in, then the truth is in you, then guess what? You are in the truth. You understand? Then you will know the truth. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. Go back to John 8, 32. Go back there again. John chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now watch this. Give me the book of wisdom of Solomon. Let's start there now. Let me get into my class. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 1. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 1. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1, verse 1. You know what? Before you get there, hmm, give me Psalms 119, verse 18. Okay. It's not in my notes, but you know what? It just popped into my head right now. Oh, praise to the Lord. Psalms 119, verse 18. Read that for me. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Read it again. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Come on. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. He says, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So we pray that the Lord open our eyes, that we may behold these wondrous things that is hidden in his laws. Okay, now, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Mm -hmm. Think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart seek him. You see that? He says we must love righteousness because we are the judges of the earth. The Lord is, 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 is changing us to become the real judges of the earth. Go ahead. For he will be found of them that tempt him not. Mm -hmm. And show it himself unto such as do not distrust him. The Lord says, you see what the Lord is saying here to King Solomon? He says, for he will not be found of them that tempt him not. Okay. And show it himself unto such as do not distrust him. Okay. So guess what? If you, you don't tempt the Lord, the Lord will be found in you. Okay, you don't distrust the Lord, the Lord will be what? The Lord will show himself unto you. Go ahead. For forward thoughts separate from God mm -hmm. and his power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. Because the unwise, the unwise have forward thoughts, meaning evil thoughts. You understand? And you're going to know the power of the Lord because you're tempting the Lord. Go ahead. For into a malicious soul, Wisdom shall not enter. You see that? Into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. A malicious soul is an evil soul. Always planning evil against somebody. Go ahead. Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin. So a malicious soul will not have wisdom. You understand? Because their body is subject to sin. Right? For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Mm -hmm. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Come on. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. You see that? It is for the Holy Spirit of discipline will be the same. Discipline is a spirit. You understand? Discipline is a spirit. What spirit? The Holy Spirit. Okay? It says will flee deceit. Why will it flee deceit? Because verse 4 tells you that wisdom will not be, the spirit of discipline will not be 
into a what? Into the mind that has deceit. You understand? Because that mind that is deceitful is that mind that is what? Malicious. Is that mind that is subject to sin. Meaning what? They give their body to perform sexual sins, fornication. You understand? The lust of the flesh. Their body is subject to sin. Whatever lust they're in, they will indulge in it. Okay? Fleshly lust, you understand? Uh, lust of your eyes, the pride of life, like it says in First John, is what he's saying right there. Read that again, verse 5. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Right. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Stop right there. So the Holy Spirit will flee deceit. And we will remove from thoughts, from thoughts that are without understanding. So I want you, I want you, brothers and sisters, pay attention here. The Lord will reveal things unto us. It says the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. So the Holy Spirit of discipline, guess what? It's it, 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 the, the discipline is the, it, the most High God created the spirit of discipline to improve our thoughts. That's number one. So discipline, you have to discipline your thoughts. That's the first thing. Okay, go ahead. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Right. For wisdom is a loving spirit. Mm -hmm. And will not acquaint a blasphemer of his words. Will not acquaint a blasphemer of his words. Go ahead, watch this, right? For God is witness of his reigns. Mind, meaning your mind, the way we think, come on. And a true beholder of his heart and a hearer of his tongue. So now watch this. Discipline is to reprove our thoughts and our what? Our words, our tongue. So discipline is to reprove our thoughts the way we think, yeah, how we think, okay? And to reprove our tongue, the things we say. Go ahead. For the spirit of the Lord filleth the world. Mm -hmm. And that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. The voice is the laws of God. Give me that in Deuteronomy 27 verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 10. Read. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. And do his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded this day. So the voice of the Lord is the commandments of the Most High. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 7. Come on. For the spirit of the Lord filleth the world. Mm -hmm. And that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. You see that thing? And that which containeth all things hath the knowledge of the voice. Meaning what? The laws of God. Come on. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. You see that thing? Remember, discipline will what? Discipline work on our thoughts to discipline our thoughts. Our words, meaning our, your tongue. Okay, that was, therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. Read. Neither shall vengeance, when it punishes, pass by him. Mm -hmm. Meaning will not escape judgment. Come on. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. Read. And the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. For the what? For the manifestation of his wicked deeds. That goes into your actions. So discipline will reprove our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Go ahead. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. Mm -hmm. And the noise of memories is not hid. Go ahead. Therefore, beware of memory, which is unprofitable. Meaning what? Running your mouth, gossiping. You understand? Go ahead. And refrain your tongue from backbiting. Backstabbing, come on. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. Mm -hmm. And the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. So now, wisdom is designed, discipline is designed to get to what to discipline our thoughts, our words, and our, our actions. And guess what? Because your actions will create a habit. Your actions will create a habit. This is a habit right here. Read verse 10 and 11 together. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things. Mm -hmm. 
and the noise of murmurings is not heard. Read. Therefore, beware of memory, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting, for there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, mm -hmm. and the mouth that belieth slays the soul. You see that thing? So now your action will become your habit. Because now is the ear of jealousy heareth all things. That means now what? Your 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 words, your actions have now become a habit now. Meaning you are accustomed to doing this. Murmuring, complaining, running your mouth, backbiting, backstabbing, speaking evil of one another. Okay, these are habits now. It says what? Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. This is now has become a habit. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. And the mouth that belieth, meaning that lies, slays the soul. Go ahead. Seek not death in the era of your life. He says, don't seek death. Don't go looking for death in the era of your life, meaning sin. Go ahead. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. And don't pull upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. Remember, the wages of sin is death. So your habit becomes your character. You understand? Because this is a character right here. Seek not death in the era of your life. Now, this is now has become your character. Now, this is you now. Okay, read that again, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Seek not death in the era of your life. Mm -hmm. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. You see that thing? This is now character right here. Now, your character will lead to your destiny. Jump down to the 16. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 16. Come on. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. You see that thing? They called death unto them in verse 12. Go ahead. For when they thought to have it their friend. Now death has become their friend. You understand? They do things that bring upon death. This is their, their destiny. Go ahead. They consume to naught. They consume to nothing, meaning what? They die. This was their fate, their destiny, their outcome. Go ahead. And made a covenant with it. Mm -hmm. Because they are worthy to take part with it. You see that thing? So now this is the death. This is the outcome. This is the end game. You understand? So now, tonight's topic is called the spirit of discipline. You understand? What we just read, go back to Psalm 119, verse 18. Psalms chapter 119, verse 18. Come on. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. We just saw wondrous things out of God's laws. You understand? Via King Solomon. Now watch this. So now what today, what tonight, what we're going to examine is we're going to examine the spirit of discipline. Because discipline... Guess what? The spirit of discipline will deal with your thoughts because your thoughts become your words. The things you think, you speak about those things. You understand? And your words become your actions. You understand? You act upon those things. Your actions become your habits. Then guess what? That action be, turns into a habit. Whether it's good or bad, it turns into a habit. You understand? Your habits become your character. You understand? Your disposition. Your character will become your destiny whether it will come to naught or you receive the kingdom. It's all up to every man and woman in here. I need you to understand that thing. Okay, now watch this. The first person to discipline is yourself. You understand? The first person to discipline is yourself. Give me Lamentations chapter 3, verse 39. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 39. Pay close attention. Okay. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 39. Mm -hmm. Wherefore doth the living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Read again. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 39. Read. Wherefore doth the living man complain, mm -hmm. a man for the punishment of his sins? So now the Lord is asking through Jeremiah, says, why does the living man complain? Why is Israel complaining? A man for the punishment of his sins because the Lord is punishing us for our sins because we sinned against him. So the Lord says we mustn't complain because we brought this upon ourselves. Come on. 
Let us search and try our ways mm -hmm. and turn again to the Lord. You see what he's saying? Instead of complaining, he says, let us search and try our ways, meaning we must examine ourselves. That's what the Lord is saying. And turn again to the most high. You understand? We must try our ways. We must search and try our ways. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. We must search and try our own ways. Okay? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. Read. And thou shalt grope at noonday mm -hmm. as the blind gropeth in darkness. Come on. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. You see what he's saying? You're not going to prosper in your ways. Because now as a people, we are not prospering in our ways. Had we kept the ways of the Lord, we would prosper as a nation. Now because we are not prospering is because why? We trusted in our ways which were not the ways of the Lord. Read again, verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. You see that thing? We are going to be oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man is going to save us out of these conditions except the Lord be with us. Go back. Lamentations. Okay. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40 again. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. Read. Let us search and try our ways mm -hmm. and turn again to the Lord. We must return back to the most like God. Come on. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. The Lord is saying we must pray unto him. We must ask him to deliver us from oppression. You understand? That's what the Lord is asking right there. What? Give me that in First John 3, verse 22. We must ask the Lord to do what? To deliver us from oppression. We must beg the most High God. We must send prayers and pray day and night. Read that. First John chapter 3, verse 22. Read. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Mm -hmm. Because we keep his commandments. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You see that? It says, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments. When it says ask, it goes into prayer. You understand? The Lord says we must pray unto him. Because we keep his commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. First John chapter 5 now. Read verse 14. First John chapter 5 verse 14. Read. And this is the confidence that we have in him, mm -hmm. that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You see that thing? If we ask anything according to his will, the Lord will hear us. You understand? What does it mean to ask? Get that in Matthew 21, verse 22. Matthew 21, verse 22. Let's see what it means when it says ask. Okay, read that. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Read and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You see that? It says we must ask in prayer. So the ask goes into prayer. It says we must ask in prayer, believing. Doing what does it mean to believe? Keeping his commandments. You understand? Then the Lord says we're going to receive it. You understand? That's what he's saying. So go back to Lamentation. Okay? Lamentation chapter 3, verse 42 now. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 42. Go ahead. We have transgressed and have rebelled. Thou hast not pardoned. You see that? Thou hast not pardoned. We have transgressed and rebelled. We transgressed the laws of God and we rebelled against his laws, statutes, and commandments. And the Lord has not pardoned. Because why? We are yet this day in our captivity. Come on. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain, thou hast not pitied. Read that again, verse 43. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 43. Read. Thou hast covered with anger. Because we transgress, because we transgress God's laws, the Lord has covered us with his anger. That's why we went into slavery. Come on. And persecuted us. He persecuted us by using the nations who had to smite us. Read. Thou hast slain. Mm -hmm. Thou hast not pitied. 
Thou hast not pity. The Lord didn't pity us when he did that. Read on. Thou hast covered thyself with the cloud mm -hmm. that our prayer should not pass through. Read again. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 44. Read. Thou hast covered thyself with the cloud mm -hmm. that our prayer should not pass through. You see that thing? It says he covered himself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Okay, now it's not talking about a regular cloud. Let's see what is this cloud. Psalms 104 verse 3. Read it. Psalms chapter 104 verse 3. Mm -hmm. Who layeth the beam of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, Read. who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now, this is some heavy stuff. When it says, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Now, this is for another class, but this is some heavy stuff right here. The cloud here is going into the chariot, you understand? It's going to the most that God's transportation system that is celestial, okay? So, go back. Give me now, go back to Lamentation, chapter 3. Okay, read verse 44 again. Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 44. Read. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud, that our prayer should not pass through. You see that? Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud, that our prayer should not pass through. That's where the Lord dwells, in the third heaven. Okay, give me Lamentations 2, verse 1 now. He says, the Lord covered himself with a cloud with his goes into the chariot. And you notice he didn't say cloud. He says cloud. Mm. Mm. Lamentations 2 verse 1. Read that. Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger? You see that thing? He covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger. Go ahead. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel mm -hmm. and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. Because guess what? Guess we became God's enemy. We became, the, we became enemies of God. Why? Because we broke his laws. Okay? So that's why the Lord was angry with us. Okay? Get that in Hosea 5 verse 15. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read that. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Come on. I will go and return to my place mm -hmm. till they acknowledge their offense. You see what he's saying? He says, I will go and return to my place. Go ahead. And seek my face. And guess what? We must seek, we're going to seek the Lord's face. Read. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You see that thing? The Lord says, in, my, in our affliction, we're going to seek him early. Because when he returned and went back to his place, he went back to, he was what? This is now going into Christ. He went back to the third heaven, you understand? And it says, in our affliction, we're going to seek him aid because why? Guess what? Our ears are going to open in oppression. We're going to go through the oppression, we're going to ask questions, and the Lord will send the prophets to wake us up so that it can be brought to our remembrance what we have done as a nation, okay? Now, give me the book of Sirach 35 verse 16. Sirach 35, because the Lord says he covered himself with a cloud that our prayers will not be heard by him. Get that in Sirach 35 verse 16. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 35 verse 16. Read. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, mm -hmm. and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. You see that thing? He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor. Guess what? We must serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. And his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. Go ahead. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. You see that? The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Now he's mentioning plural. Okay, another cloud. But guess what? That's where the Lord dwells. Read. And till it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. Read that again, verse 17. Watch this. Read again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 35, verse 17. Mm -hmm. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. The prayer of the what? The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. 
He says, the prayer of the humble will pierce the cloud. The prayer of the humble will pierce the cloud. But the prayer of the proud will not pierce the cloud. You understand? Mm. That's, another, that's another heavy stuff. But what I want to show you here is that when we humble ourselves before the Lord, when we pray, the Lord will hear our prayers. Let me give you an example, right? Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 8. Revelation 8, just a quick example. The prayer of the humble pierces the cloud. Okay, Revelation chapter 8. Um, read verse 3. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. Go ahead. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having but a golden what? censer. Read verse 1. Revelation 8, verse 1. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Now, the seven, this is now the one, at this time, the seventh seal is open. Go ahead. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. Hmm. And to them were given seven trumpets. So these seven angels were given seven trumpets. Read. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Now, this angel, the job of this angel is to what is to present the prayers of the saints before the most high God. That's the job of this angel right here. You understand? Read on. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. You see that thing? And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of all the saints, is that it ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Meaning what? It got to the cloud where the Lord is. You understand? But it was able to pierce to the cloud, which is what? Them angels. And they will present the prayers of the saints before the Most High. Okay? Give me the book of Tobit real quick. Tobit. Okay? Give me that in Tobit. Tobit chapter 12 and verse 15. Read that. Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints, mm -hmm. and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. You see that thing, it says, what this angel says, he goes in and out before the glory of the Holy One. Read again, verse 15. Tobit, chapter 12, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I am Raphael, Come on. one of the seven holy angels, Read. which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. So now the job, Raphael's job is to do what? This is the name of that angel that presents the prayers of the saints before the Most High God. You understand? Raphael meaning healer. Okay? Raphael is the one that, what, that presents the prayers of the saints before the Holy One. So go back to Sarah chapter 35, verse 17 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 35, verse 17. Read. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. You see that thing? The prayer of the humble will pierce the clouds. Okay? Which, where, that's why we read Raphael being able to deliver the prayers of the saints before the Holy One. Okay? But only when the humble prays, guess what? That prayer will pierce to the clouds. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 33. The humble, okay? The humble's prayer will reach to the cloud, and the Lord will hear that prayer. And what? The Lord will answer that prayer according. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 15, verse 33. Read that. Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 33. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Read. And before honor is humility. You see that thing? The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, which is what? The laws of God. And before honor is humility. So before we can get our honor as a nation, we must humble ourselves before what? The instruction of wisdom, which is God's commandment. Give me that in 1 Peter 5, verse 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Likewise, 
ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah, come okay. on. All of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. You see that thing? It says, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Go ahead. For God resisteth the proud mm -hmm. and giveth grace to the humble. You see that thing? The Lord says he will give grace to the humble. The humble is those that humble themselves to that day of the Lord. Go ahead. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. that he may exalt you in due time. You see that thing? He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, meaning in due season. But the Lord says he resisted the proud. Get that in Tarak 7. Tarak 7 verse 7. Let's see who is the proud. Okay, the Lord says he resisted the proud. Read that. Tarak 10 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. Read. Pride is hateful before God and men. Mm -hmm. And by both does one commit iniquity. You see that thing? When you are prideful, you commit iniquity. But he's going to tell you what pride is. Okay? He's going to tell you what pride is. Go ahead. Because of unrighteous dealings. Unrighteous dealings means sinful dealings. You understand? Among each other as a nation. Go ahead. Injuries and reaches God by deceit. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. You see that? Our kingdom was translated from one nation to another. Because guess what? We've been in slavery ever since. You understand? We only tasted the kingdom for 80 years. And after that, listen, we've been in slavery ever since. Until this very day, 2022, in South Africa. Go ahead. Why is earth and ashes proud? Earth and ashes refers to man. Okay, get that in Tarak 17, verse 32. We're coming back. He says, why is earth and ashes proud? Read that. Tarak 17, the last verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 32. Mm -hmm. He viewers the power of the height of heaven, mm -hmm. and all men are but earth and ashes. You see that all men are but earth and ashes. Go back. Tarak 10, verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 9. Read. Why is earth and ashes proud? Mm -hmm. There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. You see that thing? It says there's no more wicked thing than a covetous man. Why? Because a prideful man is a covetous man. They are already breaking the first commandment. You know, the commandment, just remember, it says covetousness, which is idolatry. Let's get that real quick in Colossians 3 verse 5. Covetousness is idolatry, which is what the breaking of the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read that. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. So covetousness, guess what? Is idolatry, which is the first commandment. Okay? Go back to Zerak 10. Zerak 10 verse 9 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 9. Read. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. Read. For such an one setteth his own soul to save. Mm -hmm. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. You see what he's saying? He says, this type of man or woman, they will do what? They will even sell their own behind to get what they want. Okay? Jump down to verse 12 now. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. Read. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God. You see what? You see that? Now Sirach is making it plain. He says, the beginning of pride is when, when we depart from the Mosai. When we depart from the Most High, guess what? It means we're departing from this Bible. So that makes us pride. That makes us prideful. That makes us proud. Go ahead. And his heart is turned away from his maker. His what? And his heart is turned away from his maker. His mind. His mind. His mind. That's where the thoughts come from. His mind is turned away from his maker. Your thoughts 
are no longer according to the words of the Most High. Now your thoughts are according to what? Your wicked imagination which the world teaches. Okay? Read that again. Verse 12. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 12. Read. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God mm -hmm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. You see that thing? So a prideful man or woman, their mind, which is where their thoughts come from, they are departed from the most high God. Meaning what? They are no longer in connection with his Bible. They are no longer in sync with the Holy Scriptures. They are in sync with their sin. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go ahead. For pride is the beginning of sin. Mm -hmm. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. You see that thing? It says men and women that are prideful. Guess what? It says they're going to pour out abomination. Meaning things that are disgusting in the sight of God. Right? And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. Strange calamities, right? And overthrew them utterly. That's why now we're at the bottom now. That's why now as a nation, we're at the bottom. You understand? We are at the bottom of the, of the bottom of all nations on earth, and the nations they speak evil of us. Why? Because we were prideful. You understand? We do not want to keep God's commandment. We departed from our rock, which is who? The most High God, Christ, also. Okay, now watch this. Now, guess what? Read that again. Read verse 12 again. I'm going to show you something with this here. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 12. Read. Right? The beginning of pride is when one departed from God mm -hmm. and his heart is turned away from his maker. And his heart is turned away from his maker. Your mind turned away from the Lord. Guess what? I mentioned the first person to examine is yourself. You understand? We must examine ourselves because our mind is turned away from our maker. So we must examine ourselves as a nation. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11. Verse 28. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 28. The Most High God is commanding each and every one of us to examine ourselves. Okay? Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Mm -hmm. But let a man examine himself. But let a man do what? But let a man examine himself. But let a man examine himself. But let a man examine himself. Okay? Examine yourself, brethren. Read it again. But let a what? But let a man examine himself. But let a man examine himself. Go ahead. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. You see that thing? That's when we break bread. He says we must examine ourselves. You understand? Whether we be in the faith. Get that in 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Get that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Mm -hmm. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? Read that again, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. You see what he's saying? He says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. We all are commanded to examine ourselves. Each and every one of us, we must sit down and examine ourselves. You understand? The first person to examine is yourself. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of discipline, which disciplines and commands us to examine ourselves. You understand? Read again, verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Come on. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? You see that thing? It says, know ye not your own selves? It says, you know yourself. You know you better than we know you. So guess what? It's your job to examine yourself. The scriptures are coming out, but it's your job at the end of the day to sit down and take stock of the things you know about yourself that are good and the things you know about yourself that are not good, which needs to be examined. So that means what? You need to deal with the reality of that situation. Okay? That's what the Lord is saying. We all deal with the realities of our situation with the word of the Most High God. You understand? Get that in Psalms 119 verse 59. Read that. 
Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. Read. I thought on my ways. I did what? I thought on my ways. That's why we read in Lamentation. It says what? Let us search and try our way. That's the same thing that King David is commanding us here in the spirit of Christ. Read that again. It says, I did what? I thought on my ways. We all must think upon our way because the Lord searches what? Our minds, whether we be in the faith. Go ahead. And turn my feet unto thy testimonies. We must return unto the Lord. That's the same thing that Jeremiah said. We must return back to the Most High God. Come on. I made haste. I did what? I made haste. You need to do what you need to do to get back into the good books of the Most High. You need to do what is lawfully, you understand, acceptable in the sight of God for the Lord to accept you, for the Lord to hear your prayers, for the Lord to have mercy upon you. Guess what? You have to make haste, okay, and did what? And delay not to keep thy commandments. Or don't delay, don't drag your feet to do this thing. Your soul is on the line. All our soul is on the line. You understand? We have not made it into the kingdom yet. We're still in captivity. You understand? So the Lord is saying, listen, don't make, don't, 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 don't delay. Make haste. Why? And return back to the Father. Before what? Before it's too late. So the Lord is telling us we must do that thing. We must do things that are pleasing unto the Lord, that the Lord will have mercy upon us. We need mercy. We need the mercy of the Lord upon us. Understand that. Okay? Give me that in uh, Isaiah 58 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 9. Because guess what? King David is commanding, he says, examine yourself. Okay? Examine yourself. Sit down because you know you. We all must sit down because we each know. Everybody knows themselves. You understand? The scriptures come out. Your job is to sit down and say, you know what? Hmm. Yeah, this is not correct. That is not correct. We all have to take stock. If you're not doing it, shame on you. If you're not doing it, really get it together. Okay? Read that. Isaiah 58 verse 9. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 9. Read. Then shall thou call, mm -hmm. and the Lord shall answer. The Lord, he says, we're going to call, meaning we pray unto him, and the Lord will answer. Come on. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. Mm -hmm. We all want that. We all want that. Listen, we need that for our nation. You understand? That when we cry unto him, the Lord will say, here I am. Go ahead. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke. You see what it says? It says, but you must take away from the midst of thee the yoke. He's going to tell you what that yoke is. Go ahead. The putting forth of the finger. That's what he's talking about. Blaming others for your own ease. You understand? That's why he said, examine yourself. Don't be putting the finger. It says what? The putting forth of the finger. You understand? Blaming others for our shortcomings. No. We must examine ourselves. That's why I went over those three steps to get to this part right here. Is it the putting forth of the what? The putting forth of the finger. So the Lord says we must take responsibility. We must each take responsibility for our action. Go ahead. And speaking vanity. And speaking lies. We must stop bearing false witness. Then the Lord says, listen, then when you pray, I'm going to hear you. You understand? But you must take, he will say what? You must take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. Watch this. Give me Matthew 7 verse 1. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Watch this thing right here. Come on. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Read. Judge not that ye be not judged. Mm -hmm. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. He says, whatever judgment we bring forth, guess what? When we do wrong, that's the same judgment we will receive. Go ahead. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Come on. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? Mm -hmm. But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. You see what he's saying? He says, why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but you don't consider the beam that is in your own eye. What is the Lord saying? Examine yourself. He says, we must, each of us, we must each examine ourselves. Go ahead. Or oh, how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, mm -hmm. and behold, 
a beam is in thine own eye? You see what he's saying? He says, why would you say to your brother, hey, there's a problem with you, but you have the same problem that your brother got. You understand? The Lord says we mustn't deal like that. Go ahead. That, this goes into what? The putting forth of the finger we read in Isaiah 58 verse 9. Go ahead. Thou hypocrite. Thou what? Thou hypocrite. So the Lord was teaching us that we must not judge in hypocrisy. Come on. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. You see that thing? So the Lord is saying, before we go out there to rebuke, correct, you understand, to correct our people and to teach them the laws of God, we must be keeping the same laws as well. That's what he's saying. We must not be hypocrites. You understand? We must stay in the spirit because when we judge and teach in hypocrisy, the Lord says, I'm not happy with you. You understand? So the Lord says we must repent. We must get our minds right. Okay, watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Because the Lord is saying we must examine ourselves. We must, each of us, we must examine ourselves. Self-examination is the key. Okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, right? Wisdom of Solomon. Give me Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Read 4 and 5 together. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. He says, into a malicious soul, wisdom will not enter. Go ahead. Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. You see what he's saying? Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. He says, into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. Go ahead. Nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Now dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Go ahead. Watch this. Read. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The Holy Spirit of discipline will flee from deceit. Read. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. That don't keep God's commandments. Come on. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. When sin comes in. Now this part right there when it says it will remove from thoughts that are without understanding. The Holy Spirit of discipline will remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Because remember, discipline is a spirit. You understand? It disciplines our thoughts. The things we think about. That are contrary to God's laws. Now watch this. Give me that in um, Ecclesiastes. Okay. Give me Sarah chapter 32 verse 14. Sarah 32 verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 14. Read. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Whoso feareth the Lord will receive his discipline. He says, whoso feareth God, they will receive the Lord's discipline. Okay, come on. And they that seek him early shall find his favor. They that seek the Lord early, they will find favor with the Lord. So it says, when we fear the Lord, we're going to receive his discipline. Because we fear the Lord by keeping his commandments, therefore we receive discipline in his commandments. Give me that in Sarah 18 verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. Come on. He has mercy on them that receive discipline mm -hmm. and that diligently seek after his judgments. Read again. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 14. Read. He has mercy on them that receive discipline. So the Lord will have mercy on those that receive discipline. Okay, I'm going to touch on that. Come on. And that diligently seek after his judgments. We must diligently seek after God's judgments. Because the most like God, his judgment is based on his laws. So we must be in his laws to understand the judgment that comes from when we don't keep his laws. So the Lord says he will have mercy on them that receive discipline. You understand? Because discipline is mercy. That's what the Lord is saying. Discipline is mercy. I get it, discipline is also correction. When we are corrected, guess what? That's mercy from the Most High God because He could just kill us, He could put us to death, He could give us a disease, something bad could happen to us. But guess what? 
The Lord says, I'm going to correct you. That's my mercy upon you. You understand? So now watch this. Um, the laws of God will discipline our spirit and our thoughts and our, everything that we do. We must be governed by God's laws. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Now, give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon. No, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Go back there. I'm forgetting something. Let me just touch on that before I proceed. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 5. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. The Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Come on. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. It will remove from thoughts that have no understanding. The thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts that are without understanding. We need to understand. Um, dealing with discipline, dealing with the spirit of discipline, we must first deal with what? Discipline deals with our thoughts first and foremost. So the first thing when we examine is our thoughts using discipline. So discipline is, is the Holy the Holy Spirit of discipline. Discipline is the Holy Spirit. You understand? So the first thing to examine, which is ourselves, is we must examine our thoughts. You understand? We must first deal with our thoughts. Give me wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 14. We must first examine our thoughts. That's the first thing because that's where evil begins to take place. From the thoughts. Okay? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Come on. And our devices are but uncertain. The thoughts of mortal men. Because we mortal men, we're no longer immortal. It says our thoughts, God says our thoughts are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. We say we're going to do things. We plan on doing X, Y, and Z and it doesn't come to pass. Why? Because our devices are but uncertain. Why? Because our thoughts is thoughts of mortal men. You understand? It says those thoughts are miserable thoughts. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. and desperately wicked. You see that? The Who heart is it? deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord knows our heart. He knows our thoughts. You understand? So, but he's telling you, the, the thoughts of mortal men, he says, they are deceitful above all things. What's deceiving them? What deceiving the thoughts and all that? is the mind. The mind is deceitful. The mind is evil, the Lord is saying. Without God's commandments, without the Lord's discipline, the mind is deceitful above all things. That's what the Lord is saying. So go back, Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. And our devices are but uncertain. Read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Read. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. The thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Go ahead. And our devices are but uncertain. Our devices, meaning our plans, they are not certain because we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know what. The, what 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 the the evil the rulers of the earth have planned for us. So guess what? Our devices are uncertain because we don't control this earth. They do in these last days. Okay, go ahead. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. The corruptible body. Guess what? Is is the corruptible body is is carrying the mind of mortal men. You see that part right there. It says, the corruptible body presses down the soul. The corruptible body is the mortal body. Go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. It weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. So the earthy tabernacle is our corruptible body. Because now we get sick. You understand? We get sick. We die. You know, our bodies are frayed. We, are not, we don't have those spiritual bodies that we used to have. You understand? We don't have those spiritual bodies. We have mortal bodies now that get sick, that are unhealthy. You understand? That get diseases and sicknesses and all of that. Because why? 
because we broke God's commandments and now we no longer have those immortal bodies no more. Read that again, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the corruptible body presses down the soul and the earthy tabernacle weighteth down the mind that muses upon many things. It says it weighs, weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. To muse, meaning your mind is all over the place. You understand? To muse, it means your mind is all over the place. Your mind is, your mind is dear makar. Why? Because the mind is, is corrupt. The mind is deceitful, the Lord is saying. So when we examine, we're using discipline to examine our thoughts. You understand? Give me Proverbs 24 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Come on. The thought of foolishness is sin. Read again. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 9. Yeah. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. So guess what? Foolish, foolishness in the mind, the law says that's sin. Foolishness in the mind, the law says that is sin. Why? Because the Lord told you the mind, he says the mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You understand? So guess what? The mind that is deceitful, guess what? It's got foolish thoughts running all around up in there. The Lord is saying that is sinful. So guess what? We must deal with the way, the, the way we think, our thoughts. Because everything that we think is, guess what? It's contrary to the laws of God. That's why we must be in the Bible so that our mind become according to the, the mind of the Lord, which is what is written in the Holy Scriptures. Read again verse 9. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. Read. The thought of foolishness is sin. Mm -hmm. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Because a scorner is those that hate God's commandments. Get that in Proverbs 1. A scorner is an abomination to men. They hate God's commandments. Okay, read that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 22. Read. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? You see what he's saying? How long, ye simple ones, do you, will you love simplicity? Read. And the scorners delight in their scorning. The scorners, they delight in their scorning. Meaning what? Going against what the Bible says, speaking evil of those that are teaching and doing it. Read. And fools hate knowledge. You see that? Scorners are fools which hate knowledge. So guess what? The mind is full of evil without the laws of God. That's what we are being taught here. Okay? Hebrews 9 verse 14. Give me that in Hebrews 9 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Come on. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, Offer himself without spot to God. Mm -hmm. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Purge your what? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So now when Christ died, you understand, when Christ died for us, he purged, he purged, his death was for us to purge our conscience from dead works. The dead works is the works of the flesh. The evil that is in our mind. You understand? So when Christ died, he took it to a next level. He said, listen, you need to deal with your thoughts. You need to deal with the way you think. We need to, we need to deal with your reign. The, 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 your reign is like um, the reign goes into the vein in which the thought process will travel through. That goes into your neural pathway. That's your reign. The Lord is saying, listen, your thought, you must deal with what your thought, your conscience. So guess what? At the end of the day, before the Lord returns, we must say, all of us, our conscience must be clear. You must have a clear conscience. So if you ask yourself and say, is my conscience clear? And you say, yes, you the devil, the Bible speaks of. Because I know what some of you in here, you say, my conscience is clear. You are the liar, you. You are a liar. Read that again, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, 
Mm-hmm. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that? Purge your conscience, your conscience from dead works. So Christ's sacrifice is so that we can purge, we purge our conscience. So guess what? We need to deal with our thoughts because our thoughts are full of evil. So guess what? The job now under the new covenant is so that at the end of the day, we all must have a clear conscience. You understand? You must not be having something hanging and your conscience is not clear. You understand? Because now when the Lord returns and that's still outstanding, we're not going to get the kingdom. So we all need to sit down and examine ourselves, understand that thing. Now, what are the solutions to deal with that? Give me Joshua 1 verse 8. These are some of the solutions to deal with the mind that muses upon many things. Okay, Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Read. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Stop right there. But thou shalt what? But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. But we must meditate in the laws of God day and night. Meditate. Meditate. Meditation. So the key to be able to deal with our evil thoughts is meditation, meditating on God's law. That's the solution. We must, that's the solution. The key and the solution to deal with thoughts that muses upon many things, we must meditate on God's laws day and night. Give me that instruction, the thing says. We must meditate on the laws of God day and night. Okay. Read that for me. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6, verse 37. Come on. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord mm -hmm. and meditate continually in his commandments. You see that? I said, let thy mind, meaning your thought, must be upon the ordinances of the Lord. The ordinances of the Lord is the laws of God. Our mind must be upon the ordinances of God and we must meditate continually in his commandments. That's one of the solutions. Meditating upon God's laws. Our mind must be constantly on the laws of God. Right? He shall establish thine heart mm -hmm. and give thee wisdom as thine own desire. The Lord will give us wisdom based on our desire. If your desire is small, your wisdom will be small. If your desire is high, your wisdom will also be high because the Lord will bless you. Why? Because why? You meditate continually in his laws. Give me that in uh, 22, verse 17. Ecclesiastes 22, verse 17. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A heart settleth upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. Read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. So now, yes, Rag is telling us that a heart, the meaning your mind that is settled upon a thought of understanding. A thought of understanding is the laws of God. Because how do we get understanding, brothers and sisters? By keeping God's commandments. So he's saying, um, your, if your mind is settled upon the laws of God, it's like a beautiful painting on the wall of a gallery. Because guess what? When you walk into a, uh, an art gallery, you look at beautiful paintings and all that. You stand there, you look at it, you, you, you see the details and all that, the drawings and whatnot, the pattern and all that. Yes. So guess what? It says your mind must be like that when it comes to the laws of God. Just like somebody that is into paintings and all that, Art and all that, you they they also they are obsessed with that. The Lord says you must be obsessed with that. Meditation goes into obsession. Meditation is obsession. You must be obsessed with the laws of God. You must be obsessed with the wisdom that's written in this book. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, I'll give an example. Give me that in Genesis 24, verse 63. Our forefather Isaac. Watch this. Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Mm -hmm. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. You see that thing? At the eventide. You understand? Towards the end of the day, 
Guess what? Our forefather Isaac, he went to meditate in the field by himself. What was he meditating upon? He was meditating upon the laws of God. His mind was settled upon the thought of understanding. Go ahead. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Meaning what? His wife was coming. Now, what I'm showing here is our forefathers, they meditated on God's law. That's how they make sure that their mind is in accordance with the, what the most High God wants. Their mind was on the laws of God. Their mind was not on what today we are minds are on. You understand? Their, his mind was upon the ordinances of the law, and he meditated continually in his commandments. So we need to follow after the footsteps of our forefathers that came before us, our foremothers that came before us for you, sisters. You understand? Now, the, the next thing that discipline will teach us, discipline will teach you to discipline your time. That's the next thing, because your thoughts become your words. That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 1. When the Lord opened our eyes that we may behold his wondrous thing. Your thoughts will become your words, the things you say, the things you speak of. Matthew 12, read verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Go ahead. O generation of vipers, mm -hmm. how can ye, being evil, speak good things? You see that? O generation of vipers, you took it to the stars and Pharisees. O generation of vipers. Jump up to verse 24 so we see who he's talking to. Verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. You see what they are calling Christ? They were calling Christ Beelzebub, Lord of the Fly. You understand? That they were insulting him. Now jump down to verse 34 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Mm -hmm. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? So he's calling them vipers. A viper is a snake. It's a poisonous snake. He says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, you understand? Because back then, it was a huge insult when you were calling somebody, uh, um, you know, comparing somebody to an animal. That was a huge insult. So it is, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, come on, do what? Speak good things. They cannot speak good things, right? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's it right there. Because out of the abundance of the mind, your thoughts, the mouth speaketh. Because your thoughts become your words. That's what we read in it. Is that because what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Watch this. Jump down to verse 36. Come on. Verse 36. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You see that? It says every idle word that men shall speak, there you're gonna be you're gonna be held accountable in the day of judgment. So it's very important for us to be mindful of the things we say. Because what we say is what's in our mind. Because why? Our mind is full of evil. Why? Because our mind is not disciplined, you understand, by the Holy Spirit. So guess what? We need to be mindful of that. What we think and what we say. Because we need to make sure that our mind, you understand, are in line with what does say the Lord. And the things we say, they are in line with what does say the Lord. You understand? So, read on. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. Mm -hmm. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. So you're going to be justified by the things you say if they line up with the laws of God. And you are going to be condemned for the things you say if they do not line up with the laws of God. So guess what? We need the Holy Spirit to discipline our tongue. Understand that thing. Give me that in James chapter 3. James 3 verse 5. Read that. James chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. You see that? The tongue is a little member, meaning it's a small organ in your mouth. Your tongue is a small organ in your mouth, but it does what? And boasteth great things. You see that thing? The tongue will boast great things. Go ahead. Watch this. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. You see that thing? It says, how great a matter. I mean, this small little member in your tongue, it says, guess what? 
it will kindle a fire. It will kindle a great fire, meaning it will cause a lot of problems. The Lord is saying, go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, mm -hmm. a world of iniquity. You see what he's calling the tongue? He says the tongue is a world. The tongue is a world of sin. Read. So is the tongue among our members. You see that? So is the tongue among our members in the congregation. Come on. That it defiles the whole body. It destroys the whole congregation. Read. And sets on fire the course of nature. You see that thing? It changes the course of nature. Just by this small thing in the mouth. Go ahead. And it is set on fire of hell. You see that thing? It is set on fire of hell. It causes a whole lot of problems in the congregation. This goes into what? Gossip. That's why when we see gossip here, I don't take kindly to that thing. Because I know how easily it can destroy the congregation. Gossiping. Running one's mouth. I'm giving an example. Give me that in 1 Timothy 5 verse 13. Because a lot of the times, you know, you know, sisters are known for this thing, running their mouth. But brothers also, they do that. Because I've seen brothers that they cannot just shut the hell up. Always just be running your damn mouth. You understand? Watch this. First Timothy 5 verse 13. Read what you got. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. Go ahead. And with all, they learn to be idle. You see that? Now this goes into the sisters. It says they learn to be idle. Go ahead. Wandering about from house to house. Actually, you know, yeah, it goes into the sister, but it's twofold. It deals with both men and women in this verse, like this particular verse. Read again. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Go ahead. And with all, they learn to be idle. Mm -hmm. Wandering about from house to house. They wander about from house to house. You know, back in the day, I remember when I was a child, I don't know if that show is still playing on radio. Because we used to listen to radio back then. And there used to be a show. Uh, I was still in primary. This is many years ago. Um, I was still in primary. And there used to be a show called Le Kaubala Seek. Le Kaubala is a stick. Le Kaubala is a stick. It says Le Kaubala Seek. I mean, what? Trust me. Always on the street, just collecting things. Collecting gossip. Collecting evil. And wherever they arrive and sit down, guess what? They will spill the whole thing. So they had a show called the Chocola Thief. Meaning what? It, listen, wherever they go, they be collecting gossip, evil, murmuring and complaining, speaking things they ought not. Okay, so this right here, the Chocola Thief, right here. Read again, verse 13. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Go ahead. And with all, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. Go ahead. And not only idle, but tetlers also and busy bodies. You see that thing? Not only idle, but tetlers also and busy bodies. Go ahead. Speaking things which they ought not. Speaking things which they ought not. They be saying things they are not supposed to be saying, but they want to say the maybe. You cannot make this stuff up. Hmm. You know, I want to go into that, but I won't. I'll leave it for another day. Watch this. Um, go back. Go back to James. James 3 verse 7. James chapter 3 verse 7. Read that. James chapter 3 verse 7. Come on. For every kind of beast mm -hmm. and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is mm -hmm. tamed mm -hmm. and has been tamed of mankind. You see that? He's letting you know. It says, listen, there's other kinds of beasts that we get on this earth. You understand? Of birds serpents and things in the sea, the fishes and all that, it is as they are tamed. Meaning what? They are controlled and has been tamed of mankind. Watch this. Go ahead, verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. You see that? But the tongue, listen, you can tame a shark. Because remember, the Lord told them they must be up in there. They must be doing exactly as they are told. But the Lord is saying the tongue that is in the man's mouth, the tongue that is in the woman's mouth, is that nobody can tame that thing. Nobody can hold that thing down. Because why? It's always just be funny. Read again, because it says the tongue is a world of iniquity. Read that again, verse 8. James chapter 3, verse 8. Come on. But the tongue can no man tame. Can no man tame, read. It is an unruly evil. Mm -hmm. 
full of deadly poison. You see that? The tongue is unruly and it's full of deadly poison. The tongue, the tongue that is not um, ruled, an unruled tongue, guess what? It says it's evil and full of deadly poison. It will destroy everything. Everything that we turn up build, the tongue will destroy that thing. That's what the Lord is telling us. Watch this. Give me Sarah 28 verse 14. Ecclesiastical 28 verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 14. Go ahead. A backbiting tongue has disquieted many. You see that? A backbiting tongue, meaning always in people's business. You understand? You cannot cover your own shame. The Lord is saying a backbiting tongue has disquieted many. Read. And driven them from nation to nation. That's why we've been from captivity after captivity because of what? A backbiting tongue. You understand? Read. Strong cities had it pulled down. The strong cities is talking about the city of Jerusalem. Go ahead. And overthrown the houses of great men. And it has overthrown the houses of great men. You understand? Because of what? The tongue. The mouth. You understand? Because uh, the, the, our forefathers were great men. And their houses were overthrown because of what? The tongue. Women that were not submissive to them, black men that be running their mouth, black women be running their mouth. You read the, 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 the gospels, you read the acts of the apostles, you see how the apostle Paul had to deal with the churches. Why? Because there was gossip in the church of Corinth. There was gossiping in the church of Ephesus. There was gossiping in the church of Thyatira. Women worship and all that. Evil going on in those churches because of what? The time. You understand? Go ahead. A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women. Stop right there. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women. Is that a backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women? Because a virtuous woman, let's get that in Sarah 26. Sarah 26, verse 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 1. Come on. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife, mm -hmm. for the number of his days shall be double. Because this woman right here, she knows her role. She knows the order of the Most High God. She supports the truth. She loves her children. You understand? And she honors the man of God. She, this woman right here, guess what? She reverences her husband. This type of woman right here, it says, the number of this man's days will be double. The Lord says, listen, I'm going to add double to your life. And if the Lord is adding double to this man, guess what? He also will be adding double to you as a sister, as the wife. Hmm. The blessing that the husband will get, the wife will get the same blessing too. Go ahead. Come on. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband. You see that? She brings joy to her husband. She's a pillar of rest. Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see that thing? Because this man will repose in trouble with this woman. Go ahead. A good wife is a good portion. Mm -hmm. Come on. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. You see that thing? is as we shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. So now, how is it that a backbiting tongue had cast out these virtuous women from their house? Because this woman... She listened to single women who was not married. Because single women keep women single. That means what you need to understand. Because guess what? Single women, they are envious of those that are married and submit to their husband. They say, you don't listen to everything he says and all that. Why? Because they cannot hold a man. They cannot keep a man. But they sleep with men. But they cannot keep one. You understand? I'm going to give an example. Give me that in second Ezra. Okay? Give me second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 49. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 49. Read. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. You see that thing? A whore envies a right, honest, and virtuous woman. A whore is a single woman that sits around. She cannot keep a man and get married. You understand? She's still young. She's still sowing a royal oak. I think that's what they say. She's still exploring. She's still young. 
So, but what's happening here is these women, they destroy houses of great men. And virtuous women that are married, they, they also, they are foolish enough to listen to these, what, to these single women who's going to come and destroy their house. Understand that. That's what's going on. It's going to happen in the truth. It almost actually took place. Hmm. You might be asking, what the hell? Yes, it almost took place. Because we had a sister up in here. She had a big mouth. That Jezebel spirit was on her. Guess what? She managed to take a sister out in here. She managed to she managed almost to infect a sister in the truth. You cannot make this up. You can't make this up. Read that thing again. Go back to where it was at. Go back to um, Ecclesiastes 28. Read verse 15 again. You understand? I know they'll be chasing me out right now. I don't give a damn. It is what it is. It's medicine. Take it. Read that thing for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 15. Go ahead. A backbiting tongue mm-hmm. had cast out virtuous women. You see that? A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women. Read. And deprive them of their labors. And deprive virtuous women of their labors to serve their husband and be an example to their kids and be an example to the young sisters coming up in here. Go ahead. Whoso hearkeneth unto it shall never find rest. You see that thing? If you listen to that evil, demonic, Polish woman who's not married, guess what? It says what? You're not, you're not gonna find rest. Read. And never dwell quietly. I mean, my God, man. Whenever we come together, the sister's always running her mouth. Sister, please be quiet. Whenever she moves away from us, the man, he's always right there. Yip, 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 you always running her damn mouth. You understand? We hope the sister can repent and turn back. But guess what? We're gonna use as an example of what not to be. You sister, you better pay attention. Okay? Read. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. Meaning what? That's talking about being whipped. Go ahead. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see that thing? The stroke of the tongue. Remember what the apostle James said. Is that the tongue is evil, full of deadly poison. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Meaning it's that dangerous. Meaning it'll destroy somebody's mind. Not only that, it will destroy somebody's marriage. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword. Go ahead. This is a physical sword. Now watch this. But not so many as have fallen by the tongue. You see that thing? It says, but many have fallen by the tongue. Nations have gone to war because of the tongue. You understand? Marriages have been broken up because of the tongue. You understand? Read. Well is he that is defended from it. He says you are well if you are defended from that evil tongue. Read. And has not passed through the venom thereof. You see that thing? And has not passed through the venom thereof. The poison thereof. That's what the apostle James said. Because the tongue is dangerous. You understand? Your thoughts will become your word. He says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? Watch this. This is for the married and unmarried. Give me that in Sarah 25 verse 20. Sarah 25 verse 20. We're still dealing with the tongue. Okay? Watch this. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 20. Mm-hmm. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the aged. Because an old man climbing up a sandy way. I tell you, your feet will sink into the sand. So it's going to be hard. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. You see that? The Lord says this is a disaster right here. It says, it's the same as a wife that is full of words, meaning what? She cannot keep her mouth shut. She's always running a damn mouth. The Lord says, this type of woman right here is like what? It's like an old man climbing up a sandy way. It says, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. The two of you are not made for each other. You understand? Because why? Because she's loud, you are not. So you are not on the same energy. You are not moving in the same spirit. Therefore, you cannot walk together. Therefore, there will not be peace in your house. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 27. 
Even that in Proverbs 27, verse 15. I think that's what I read. Proverbs 27, verse 15. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 15. Go ahead. A continual dropping in a very rainy day mm -hmm. and a contentious woman are alike. You see what the Bible is saying? It is a continual dropping in a very rainy day. A continual drop is talk about raindrops. You understand? And you hear the sound of that the, the, the drop of water. Or your your your, your roof is, 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 is leaking and all that. And then it rains. Guess what? There's going to be obviously the house will well, the roof is leaking, the water is coming into the house, and you hear the sound of it. Or you can even hear that when you open the tap and you close it and it's not fully closed, because I hear it all the time when I'm in, when I'm here. And you hear that water just going into the into the sink. You think you can tolerate it? Oh hell no. That thing is annoying. You will get up and go and close the tap properly. You understand? So guess what the law says? A contentious wife is just like that. Annoying. With a big mouth. You understand? So, go ahead. Verse 16. Read on. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind. You see that? It, 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 the Lord says, you hiding that type of woman is like you hiding the wind. You cannot hide the wind. Read. And the ointment of his right hand, which bewrayeth itself. Meaning what? The ointment of your right hand is which bewrayeth itself. Meaning what? I give an ointment is something that smells. You understand? It says, guess what? You, you, at the end of the day, the smell will come out. You cannot hide that. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So to avoid all that, make sure you prove and listen to counsel when it is given unto you. Okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Ecclesiastes, okay? Give me a track. Ecclesiastes 25, read verse 25. Track 25, 25. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 25. Go ahead. Give the water no passage. Mm -hmm. Neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. You see that thing? The water is talking about the woman's big mouth. It says, don't give water, that, that big mouth, don't give it a day. Don't give it a second to be alive. No. The Lord says, shut that thing down because it's going to destroy your house. It says, neither a wicked woman, liberty to get abroad, meaning to run her mouth. The Lord says, don't allow that to take place because it's going to destroy you and your house. Okay? Psalm 26, read verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 8. Mm -hmm. A drunken woman and a getter abroad causes that? great anger. A drunken woman and a getter abroad. What is she drunken with? Because it's twofold. What is the drunkenness? Give me, give me the book of Micah. Okay. What is the drunkenness? Micah 2, verse 11. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. Go ahead. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. You see that? I'm going to prophesy unto thee of wine and strong drink. So the spirit, the, the wine and the strong drink is the spirit of falsehood and lies. What is this going into? Remember, it says a drunken woman, that goes into a woman that is not sober-minded. She also physically, she's not sober, she's a drunk. But I'm going into the spiritual part. This woman, she's drunk with philosophies of men. What is the main philosophy that has given the black woman liberty to get abroad, to run her damn mouth? Feminism. Feminism is the spirit, is, the, is, is what our, our sisters today, they are drunk with feminism. Our sisters today, they are drunken with feminism. The feminist movement, you understand, CCCC, they, they, they think they are equal or above the men. That's the, that's the spirit they are drunk with. And who gave them that spirit? You know it, the so-called white man. He's the one that has given our sisters liberty to get abroad. That's why now they are drunk with what? They are drunk with wine. Get that in Ephesians 5. I'm going to show you what the wine is that we read in Micah 2. Ephesians chapter 5. He said, be not drunk with wine. Verse 18. Come on. 
Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Come on. And be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine. This drunken woman, she's drunk with wine. That wine goes into philosophies. You understand? Go ahead. Wherein is excess. Wherein is too much. Because right now, there's fem feminism is running rampant on this earth. And the brainchild of feminism was homosexuality. The brainchild of feminism was homosexuality, lesbianism, and all that. The LGBTQIZFW, whatever. The alphabet community. Guess what? They, the, fe the feminist movement gave birth to the LGBT community. They are all in the same WhatsApp group. Because now if there is too much it's excess. Look at Musomiz. You understand? No shame whatsoever. Okay? Read. But be filled with the spirit. But be filled with the You see that? But be filled with the spirit. With spirit, the spirit of the most high God. Because right now they are not filled with the spirit of the Lord. They are filled with the spirit of Satan. A.K.A. the so-called white man. Understand that thing. Now, let's go back. Psalm 26, verse 8. Read. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 8. Read. A drunken woman and a getter abroad. He is drunken with what? The philosophies of the so-called white man. Feminism. Okay? She's drunk with that. She's drunk with that philosophy. And now she, she thinks she now has been given license to speak evil of her black man, to disrespect her black man. You understand? To look at the black man that he ain't nothing. We see it at work. We see that at our job place. We see that thing. You understand? We see it in the taxi. Okay? Because I had a story that, you know, there was, there was in transit. And these black women, the brother of the taxi driver didn't have change. And now all of a sudden, the black woman starts complaining, speaking evil of the driver, cursing him out that he does not have change. I mean, are you kidding? And the black man was in the taxi. They said nothing. They did not rebuke those black ashy demons that was disrespecting that brother that was driving the taxi. You cannot make this up. You understand? You cannot make this up. Okay, now, read the thing again, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 8. Read. A drunken woman and a getter abroad causes great anger. They, you see that? They cause great anger. And they do it because they know it does it. And when you respond, they say, you see, he's violent. He's this. He's that. Guess what? Brother, when you see stuff like this going on in your marriage, walk the hell away. Walk away. Don't entertain this because if you do and you respond the way a man does, you're going to jail, my friend. You're going to jail. You understand? So you have to always stay in the same. That's why you brothers that are yet to get married, make sure you prove a sister to be able to see her in all seasons. When she's angry, when she's mad, how does she respond? How does she deal with it? Okay, read. And she will not cover her own shame. And that's what you are seeing today. Black women who cannot cover their own shame. Look at Wendy Williams. Look at Mukanimbao. Look at Mu Munchal. Look at Mu Peltus. Hmm? Look at Mu Ranaka. You can, listen, the list goes on and on and on. They cannot cover their own shame. And guess what? Those are the people that the young girls are looking up to as the role models. Hmm? But the, the new day, the prophets are back. This is not, that will not take place. Not no more. The prophets are back this day. Understand that thing. Okay, now, watch this. Um, let's go back. Um, hmm. Yeah, I was dealing with a married couple and all that. You brothers that are not married, sisters as well, pay attention to that. Because guess what? This also affects you. Give me Sarah 25, verse 8 again. Sarah 25, verse 8. Now give me Sarah 25, verse 8. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 8. Read. Well is him that dwelleth with the wife of understanding. You see that thing? It says, well is that brother that dwelleth with the wife of understanding. This sister is a virtual sister. She understands the scriptures. She understands their role, how to treat her Lord. Read. And that has not slipped with his tongue. 
and the man that has not kicked with his tongue. The Lord says, blessed as you, brother, because me, I know for myself, I have slipped with my tongue. You understand? I have done this. I have slipped with my tongue, okay? Mm. You know, you see something, you place it, you have to really just mm, jump on it. Oh, let me not go left. Read the verse again. <laughs> verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 25, verse 8. Go ahead. Well is him that dwelleth with the wife of an understanding. Uh -huh. And that has not slipped with his tongue. Go ahead. And that has not served a man more unworthy than himself. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Now watch this. Give me James 3 verse 1. Because the apostle James, he explained this. Okay. He explained it. James 3 verse 1. Watch this. James chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. My brethren, be not many masters. He says, be not don't many be. masters. Be, don't be many masters. Don't, don't, don't seek to be a leader. You understand? Be not many masters. Why? Go ahead. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. There's going to be greater judgment because we know better you're supposed to do better. Hmm. Some heavy stuff. Okay, this is for the men's conference that's coming. Go ahead. Verse 2, read. For in many things we offend all. You see that? For in Because in many things we offend all. Because many brothers and sisters will come in, they are going to be offended at what's coming out. Go ahead. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. If any man offend not in word, like we read in Surah 25, it says what? The same is a perfect man. Come on. And able also to bridle the whole body. You see that thing? We all will also to bridle the whole body, meaning to direct the whole body. So sometimes you're going to slip with your tongue. You understand? It, it will happen from time to time. Why? We're still getting our minds right. We're still getting it together. But guess what? We will get to this level of perfection. You understand? The Lord be willing, as it is written. Now watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. This is you brothers that are emotional. You understand? This is for you emotional brothers. Watch this. Proverbs 6. Who don't know how to respond to stuff? Proverbs 6, verse 12. Read that. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. You see that? A, weak, a naughty person and a what? A naughty person and a wicked man is that they walk with a forward mouth. Meaning what? They always speaking poisonous things. Not things to build, but poisonous things. Okay, watch this. Give me Proverbs 10 verse 18. Proverbs. Chapter 10 verse 18. Read that. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 18. Mm -hmm. He that hideth hatred with lying lips mm -hmm. and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. You see that? You hide hatred with lying lips. You lie because you know you are, hate, you are harboring hatred. You don't, apply the, you don't apply that royal law. It says, he that utters a slander is a fool. Meaning you slander your own brother. Watch this. Now, what are the solutions to this? Because these are issues that are going on. We need to find solutions to these issues right here. Give me Sarah 28, verse 25. Sarah 28, verse 25. Let's read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 28, verse 25. Mm. And weigh thy words in a balance. You see that? It says, weigh your words in a balance. Meaning what? Be considerate of what you're about to say. Meaning, weigh your words in balance. What's the balance? The laws of God. The laws of God will give you a balance of what to say, how to say, when to say. Right? And make a door and bar for thy mouth. You see that thing? Make a door and a bar for thy mouth. The door and the bar that is going to pluck your mouth is the laws of God, God's commandment. Read. Beware thou slide not by it. You see that thing? He says, beware that you don't slide by it. Meaning you don't fall by this mouth that you have not what? You have not tamed to the laws of God. Read. Lest thou fall before him that lieth in wait. Let thou fall before him that is waiting for you to fall by your mouth. Okay, watch this. Give me, um, give me the book of First Thessalonians. Okay, chapter four, verse eleven. 
1 Thessalonians 4, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Go ahead. And that he study to be quiet. You see that? Read again that you what? And that he study to be quiet. And that you must study to shut the hell up. Study to be quiet. Okay, go ahead. And to do your own business. Mind your business. Mind your business. Read. And to work with your own hands. Mm-hmm. Don't be a busy as, body like we read in 1 Timothy 5 verse 13. Go ahead. As we commanded you. As we did what? As we commanded you. Because it's a command. It's a com- this is not a suggestion. Okay, go ahead. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without. That you walk honestly towards them that are not in this truth. Because you're supposed to be an example to them. Read. And that ye may have lack of nothing. That ye may have lack of nothing because the Lord will what will take care of you. Give me Sarah 32 verse 7. Sarah 32 verse 7. Now, because this is this one right here, this is the one that keeps coming up over and over. And I need you men to get it together. Watch this. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 7. Go ahead. Speak, young men. If there be need of thee. Meaning what? Tame your mouth. You understand? Control your tongue. Speak, young man, if there be a need of you. If there's a need for you to speak. As a young man, there's no need for you to say nothing. Go ahead. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Well, nobody going to ask you. Okay, go ahead. Verse 8, read. Let thy speech be short. And when you speak, let your speech be short. Read. Comprehending much in few words. You must comprehend the Lord with a few words. Read. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. He says, be as one that knows, but yet you hold your tongue. Go ahead. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. Mm-hmm. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. Don't be running your damn mouth. You understand? This goes for men and women. So the Lord is saying, don't be doing that. Okay? Stay focused. That's what the Lord is saying. Control your tongue. You understand? That said the Lord. Get Philippians. You know what? Before you get Philippians, get Sarah. Sarah chapter 9, verse 15. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 15. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. Go ahead. Let thy talk be with the wise. Mm-hmm. And all thy communication in the law of the Most High. You see that thing? And all your communication must be in the laws of God. Why? Because you're meditating, like we read earlier. Okay, Philippians 1, verse 27 now. Philippians 1, verse 27. Philippians, chapter 1, verse 27. Read. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ is the laws of God, right? That whether I come and see you or else be absent, Mm -hmm. I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. You see what he's saying? He says, whether I'm there with you or not, make sure that you stand fast in one spirit, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's a commandment right there. He's giving you a commandment, okay? Give me Romans 3 verse 4. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Watch this thing right here. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. Go ahead. God forbid. Mm. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Wait. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings that and mightest... Be- That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. You see what he's saying? That you may be justified in thy sayings. Because why? When you are in the laws of God, you're going to be justified because you say the things that are written, that can be referenced, that can be proven, that, oh, by the way, it is written what he's saying. But if you say things that are not written, guess what? You're going to be condemned by what you say, like we read in Matthew 12, what Christ said. Great. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And you are going to overcome when you judge. You understand? The next thing, the next thing is, guess what? Your thoughts 
become your words, your words become your action. So it's a trickle down effect, whether it be good or bad. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Jeremiah 17. Let's go back there. I'm going to show you something this day. Because I saw something as we were reading it this earlier. And let me just jot it down in my notes real quick. But this time we're going to read all the way to verse 10. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He says, the mind, the mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? It? Watch this. Go ahead. I, the Lord, search the heart. Stop right there. Remember, the subject matter is about the heart. Right? The Lord says he searches the heart because the heart is the one that is deceitful. He says he searches the heart. He does what now? Go ahead. I try the reins. He tries your thoughts. Because remember, your, the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay. Read. Even to give every man according to his ways. According to his what? According to his ways. That's what King Solomon said. This is the wickedness, what? The punishment of his wicked deeds. Actions. Okay. Actions. Read. And according to the fruit of his doings. And according to the fruit of his doings. According to the fruit of his actions. You see that thing? So your thoughts will, 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 will lead to will what? Your thoughts make up your words. From your thoughts, then your words come out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You understand? Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. That's what we just read here. The Lord says he judges that, he checks that, he examines that. So it's our job to examine it before the Lord does. Because when he does it, we might be put to death. Now watch this. Give me Matthew. Matthew 12, verse 35. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Come on. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasure Bring us forth evil things. You see that thing? So the Lord is telling you, listen, the good man out of the good treasure of the heart, meaning his mind, is going to bring forth good things, the laws of God. That's a good thing. Get that in uh, Romans 7 verse 12, real quick. So we know what the good man, you understand, out of the good treasure of the heart, he says he will bring forth good things. Okay, read it. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Wherefore the law is holy mm -hmm. and the commandment holy and just and good. You see that the commandment and the laws, they are good. So go back, Matthew 12 verse 35. Matthew chapter 12 verse 35. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. You see that thing? The good thing is the laws of God, the commandment of God. The good treasure. What is this treasure? Hold that. Give me that in Matthew 13 now, verse 52. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. What is this good treasure? What is this treasure that he's talking about? Read that. Hold on. Hold that. Give me Proverbs 2. Hmm. Let me jot it down. It's not in my notes. Hold on. Proverbs 2, verse 1. Start there. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. So the word is the commandment of the Lord, read. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm -hmm. and apply thine heart to understanding. And apply your mind to understanding, which is the word, which is the commandment in verse one, read. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge mm. and lifted up thy voice for understanding, you see that thing? You cry after knowledge. You ask, you cry, you pray for knowledge, and you lift up your voice for understanding of what this Bible is saying. Read. If thou seekest her as silver, mm -hmm. and searches for her as for heat treasures. You see that thing? So the, the, the treasure is talk about the wisdom of the most high like God. That's the treasure. The treasure is God's law. Understand that thing. Read. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. and 
find the knowledge of God. Come on. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see that thing? For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So the treasure is the wisdom and the understanding that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Understand that. So go back to Matthew now, chapter 18. Now give me Matthew 13, verse 52. Watch this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. Mm -hmm. Then saith he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, mm -hmm. which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. You see that thing is going to bring forth out of his treasure things new and old. What is the treasure? The laws of God. Where are the laws of God? Where are the laws of God? When you learn in them, they are in your mind. I agree you learn them. You eat the book. You eat the role. You learn it. That's then, when you learn, you apply it. Guess what? Over time, you're going to bring out of your treasure things new and old. Old Testament, New Testament. You understand? You're going to do that thing. Now watch this. Now go back. To Matthew chapter 12, verse 35 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Go ahead. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You see that thing? The evil man out of the evil treasure will bring forth evil things. Because his treasure is full of evil. Understand that? If the treasure is full of evil, jump up to verse 34, because Christ is saying it. Verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Mm -hmm. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He says what? How can ye, being evil, speak good things? You cannot be evil and speak good things. I remember back in the day, there was a brother that walked into a church. And now he comes to the back seat. We all sit in there. You understand? Look at in the East Land. Here's what happened. The brother walks in. He's smelling of booze. You understand? Then he says, here comes the sister. You know, with a weave, cook it to the side. She comes in. She sits down. Then all of a sudden, she starts to complain, as always. The sister walks in. She starts to complain. She's like, how? Hey, Hmm. We're smelling booze in here. The brother, the brother said, listen, listen, my sister. She's like, listen, I cannot eat an orange and nganugi banana. That's what he said. I was like, you know, that was a beautiful punchline. You understand? I cannot eat an orange and smell like a banana. That's what he said. I thought that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, yeah. Now watch this. Um... Read the verse 34 again. Read verse 34 again. Watch this. Watch this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Mm -hmm. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Mm -hmm. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now watch this. Jump up to verse 33. Watch this thing right here. Go ahead. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Either make the tree good and his fruit good. You see that? He says, either make the tree good, the tree is making reference to man. Hold that. Give me that in Mark 8, 24. Real quick. The tree here is a parable. is making reference to similitude. He's making reference to mankind. Mark 8, verse 24. Read that. Mark chapter 8, verse 24. Read. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. Go back. Matthew 12, verse 33. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Either make the tree good and his fruit good. You see that? Make the tree good, meaning the man must, must be good. He must be good according to the laws of God. Okay? And his fruit good. Go ahead. Or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. Mm -hmm. For the tree is known by its fruit. You see what he's saying? Or else make the tree corrupt. Meaning if the tree is corrupt, it's going to bring forth a corrupt fruit. That's what he's saying. 
because the tree is known by his fruit. You can tell by the fruit, you understand, what type of tree it comes from. That's what the Lord is saying. Jump down to verse 35 again, because he's repeating himself in verse 35. Read it. Verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You see that thing? We're going to deal with that part, the evil man. Now give me Matthew 7, verse 16. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Read that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Come on. Ye shall know them by their fruits. You see that? You're going to know them by their fruits. You're going to know them by their fruits. Go ahead. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So he's asking, do men gather what? Read the part again. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? He says, do men gather grapes? Of thorns, meaning do men go to a thorn tree and gather grapes, right? Or what? Or figs of thistles. Do men go to a thistle tree and gather figs? No, they don't do that. Okay, go ahead, watch this, read. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, meaning a good tree will bring forth good fruit, right? But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. But a corrupt tree will bring forth evil fruit. Hold this. Get the book of Sarah 27. Read verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 6. Mm -hmm. The fruit declare it if the tree have been dressed. You see that thing? The tree will, the fruit will tell you if the tree has been well taken care of. You understand? If it was planted by the river of the water. Go ahead. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of men. That's the same thing that Christ says. So Christ is quoting Zerachim. You understand? The utterance of a conceit in the heart of men, meaning what, what they say, their, their words, because their words will become their action. That's what we're going over here. You understand? Go ahead. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak. You see that thing? He says, don't praise no man before you hear him talk. Because why? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Read right? For this is the trial of men. So every man's trial is their conversation because their conversation is based on their thoughts. Their thoughts is based on whether they are disciplined by God's laws or whether they are, they are what? They are controlled by their lives. You understand? So go back to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Read. Even so, Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Mm -hmm. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Go ahead. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. A good tree will not bring forth an evil fruit. Go ahead. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. A corrupt, neither, neither will a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Go ahead. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down. And cast into the fire. Meaning what? They're going to be put to death. This man that brings forth not good food will be put to death because why? They are not profitable. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruits ye shall know them. Whether it's an evil tree or it's a good tree, at the end of the day, you're going to know them by their fruit. So now let's deal with the evil fruit, with the corrupt tree. Watch this. Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12. Read verse 35 again. Matthew chapter 12 verse 35. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Read. Right? And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So now this evil man out of the evil treasure he will bring forth evil things. What is this going into? Give me um, give me the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. I'm going to show you the fruit that comes from a corrupt tree. Galatians 5, verse 19. Read that. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. These are the fruits that come from a corrupt tree. 
The fruits that come from a corrupt tree is what? Read? Adultery. Adultery. So guess what? I'm giving examples here of the type of fruits that will come from a corrupt tree. Adultery. Sexual, you know, breaking the laws of marriage. That is, that though, this is a fruit that comes from a corrupt tree. Read? Fornication. Fornication. This goes into sexual sin. Read? Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Come on. Lasciviousness. Evil sexual desires. Come on. Idolatry. Idolatry. Worshipping of other gods. Read. Witchcraft. Mm, witchcraft. Buloi. Go ahead. Hatred. Hatred. Read. Variance. Mm. Emulations. Come on. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Coming up with the evil, demonic, abominable doctrine in the congregation. Read. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Mm -hmm. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, Read. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see that thing? So everything that we just said, these are the fruits that come from a corrupt tree. You understand? By their fruit, you shall know them. So all of these things right here, we all need to examine all these things. Each and every one of us, we must examine these things. So you can see whether you are a good tree or you are an evil tree. And guess what? If you discover that you are an evil tree, your job is to do what? You examine yourself and discipline yourself to do what? To make sure that your actions they favor what the Bible says and they support that says the law. They don't go contrary to that says the law. Understand that thing. Now, go back to Matthew. Okay, Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse, read verse 35 again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. Mm -hmm. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bring it forth good things. Read it again. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. Because the Lord to the Christ told us that listen, a good tree will never bring an evil fruit. That's what he's saying. You understand? He's not gonna bring an evil fruit. So, what is Christ teaching us? Say, listen, the evil fruit will always vibrate in, in the what in the works of the flesh. They are not going to work hard to get it together, they are not going to work hard to get rid of it. They're not going to fast, pray, apply, and all that. They're not going to do that. When they fall, they'll complain. When they fall, they'll give up. When they fall, they'll fall out this truth. When they fall, they'll have the spirit of bitterness every time. Instead of what? Getting up, dusting themselves off, and getting it together. That's a good fruit. Because they want to get it together. They want to please the Lord. But an evil fruit will not do that. That's the difference. Okay? Now, a good tree, a, which is a good man, goes into that. This is, the, this is the fruit that will come from that good tree. Read that in Galatians 5, verse 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Read meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So now what we just read, we had a class about, there's a, there's, a, there's a class that we went over in detail regarding the fruit of the Spirit. It is, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, which is keeping of God's laws. So the, a good tree will, work, will keep God's commandments, will have the spirit of joy, will bring peace among men. They are long-suffering, meaning patience, gentleness, okay? Um, goodness, faith, they'll have faith, go ahead, it says meekness, they will humble down to what they say the law, temperance, they'll be serious, against such, is a, meaning against all these that we just mentioned, is that there's no law against these, if a brother or sister is doing these, there's no law against them, you understand, so a good tree will bring forth this, understand that thing, so there is no one bringing this out, I'm bringing this out because it's very important to understand that your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions. So if, the, if discipline is not there, 
If that spirit of discipline is not there to discipline your thoughts, your words, and your action, guess what? Go to Matthew. I mean, here's what's going to take place. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7 and verse 19. Watch this. Matthew chapter 7 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. This fire right here is talking about the lake of fire. Give me Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3, read verse 11. No, no, verse 10. Verse 10. Watch this. Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Stop right there. It says the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Plural. Christ is speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. They are the trees here in question. Go ahead. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. You see that thing? He's repeating himself again. Watch this. Go ahead. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. Because this is John the Baptist speaking, speaking to the scribes and Pharisees. That's the same thing that Christ said. Wait. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. You see that thing? Remember, it says, he that cometh after me is mightier than me. We reading Matthew 3. We just read Matthew 7. Go ahead. <laughs> Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Mm -hmm. Come he on. shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You see what he's saying? He says, this man that, that's coming after me, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, which is the laws of God, and with fire. This fire right here is first goes into what? The trials and tribulation that we have to go through. Not only that, but it's also going into nuclear fire. Next, next verse. He's going to tell you that. Come on. Whose fan <laughs> is in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he will thoroughly purge his floor. He will truly, he will truly purge his floor. I Meaning he's going to destroy, you know, the wicked will be set on fire. And this is not talking about the other nations, talk about Israel. Right? And he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. You see that thing? He'll gather his wheat into the garner. The wheat is the elect. Right? But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He will burn up the chaff. The chaff is the corrupt tree. The corrupt tree that bringeth forth not good fruit. They are the chaff. Will be burned with unquenchable fire. You understand? That's why, like it says in Job, a fire not blown. Yes, that's that unquenchable fire right there. That's the what? That's nuclear fire when the Lord returns. Okay? That's what's going to happen. Now, go back to Matthew now. Read Matthew chapter 7. Um, read verse 20 now. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, by their what? Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Wherefore, by their actions, you shall know them. The fruit goes into that. The actions, whether it's the lust of the flesh or whether it's the fruit of the spirit. The choice is yours. You understand? Because this is a battle. We must fight. We must war to be part of the elect. Now watch this. Give me the book now. You know, I dealt with some solutions in terms of the fruit of the spirit, but let's get some more. Give me First Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Let's get some solutions. How do you make sure that you are not, you don't fall under that corrupt tree? You're not part of the corrupt tree that brings forth evil fruit. Give me First Samuel 2 verse 3. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Go ahead. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Mm -hmm. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Right. For the Lord is the God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. You see that? By the most like God, actions are weighed. The Lord, he judges us by our actions. Our actions. Whether our actions is are put into what? The works of the flesh or the fruit of the spirit. Either way, the Lord will judge us. Okay? Now, give me that in Matthew 5, verse 16. It says, actions are weighed. Our actions must always, must always do what? Read that in Matthew 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Right. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
You see that thing? So our actions must always be what? Our actions must always be to glorify our Father which is in heaven by letting our light shine, by being an example to our brothers and sisters that are without. Our brothers and sisters that are in the world that don't know anything about this truth, by our actions and our conduct and our behavior, they must be able to start to ask questions. Hey, what's going on with you? Why you live like this? How come you don't? How come you don't? How come you don't? Then you begin to explain what's going on. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. Go ahead. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. You see that? But he that glory, he says we must glory in the Lord. Go ahead. For not he that commandeth himself is approved, mm -hmm. but whom the Lord commandeth. You see that thing? But for not he, for not he, for not he that commandeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commandeth, but he whom the Lord commandeth. So now we must always give praise to the Lord always. You understand? We must always do things to glorify the Lord. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. So when we go out to teach our people God's command, jump up to verse 6, to teach God's laws, this is what we must always keep in mind because the first person to examine is who? Ourselves. Read that, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Come on. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, Mm -hmm. when your obedience is fulfilled. You see that thing? We must be ready to revenge all disobedience. You need to go out there, you teach our people, you teach our people to be in order and all that, but we are not in order ourselves. That's out of order in the sight of God. You understand? We're going to be delving deep into those topics, actually. We're going to be very clinical about how we deal with that and who teaches on the street and what topic they're supposed to deal with based on where they are in their personal life. It's coming. You understand? It is coming. Go ahead, read again, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Read. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, mm -hmm. when your obedience is fulfilled. When our obedience is fulfilled, so that what? We don't look like hypocrites. Give me that in Judith 8.24. Judith chapter 8, verse 24. Watch this. Judith chapter 8, verse 24. Go ahead. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren mm -hmm. because their hearts depend upon us because and the sanctuary. Because their hearts depend upon us. Remember, the mind of our people is God in the world. You understand? Because why? Because. Hmm, Hold this. Give me Second Corinthians chapter four. Let me show you that. Second Corinthians four. You know what? Before you get that, give me the book of Revelation, right? Give me Revelation two. Revelation two, um, verse seventeen. Revelation two, verse seventeen. Read that. Revelation chapter two, verse seventeen. Come on. <clears throat> he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Go ahead. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the heathen manna. Stop right there. To it says what? Read that again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the heathen manna. Stop right there. It says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Of the hidden men, the men. Hmm. Give me Second Corinthians four. If you overcome your own sin, trials and tribulations, you understand whether you die in this truth in so, or guess what? Or you are here when the Lord returns. It says you're gonna receive of the hidden men. Watch this. Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse three. Watch this. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three. Right? But if our gospel be hid, mm -hmm. it is hid to them that are lost. You see that thing? So the hidden manna is the gospel that is hid to our people, is hid from our people that are lost. You understand? They are lost in Christianity, Islam, democracy, 50-50, feminism, LGBT. You understand? So they are lost. So the true gospel of Christ, they don't know it. And those that 
those that reject it because they reject it when we go to the streets and teach them and they reject the black messiah they reject that the israelites are so-called black black men and black women they reject all that you understand the gospel is hidden from them and they are going to ever remain lost if they don't repent go ahead in whom the god of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not you see that thing the god of this world let's talk about the so-called white man iso edom idumia the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not not what the gospel go ahead lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them because that's now the mercy of the lord the adventure of the lord was shine that glorious gospel unto them to open their mind to lighten their eyes that they may see out of obscurity okay now go back to jury because this is the mindset of our people that hidden manner which is the gospel of Christ is hidden from them because they are lost why they have been blinded by the god of this earth this day the god of, that the man that's ruling this earth today go back to jury 8 verse 24 this is the mindset of our people jury chapter 8 verse 24 Go ahead. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, mm -hmm. because their hearts depend upon us. You see that thing? Let us show an example. To show means this is an action. You understand? This is an action. It's not. It's not. Um. It's not theoretical. This is action. It is now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example. What is the Lord telling us? Our people need examples. Because our people have been seeing evil and, and demonic examples all their lives. Now, they are looking for good examples. We are supposed to be those good examples. We must be those examples to them. When we keep these laws, we are sincere. You know, friend, we love the Lord in all our heart, in all our soul and mind. Guess what? We become that good example to our people, and our people will follow. Why? Because we are obeying what the Bible says. We're doing what it says, and we're showing them how it's done. That's why it says we must show an example to our brethren. Why? Come on. Because their hearts depend upon us. You see that? Their minds depend upon us. So their minds, the minds of our people is dependent on us, showing them how it's supposed to get done. Because we are applying it. When they follow, it means we're setting, the, we're setting a good example. That's the point. Read on. And the sanctuary and the house, and the altar rest upon us. You see that thing? Because it says the sanctuary, the house of Israel, and the altar, it rests on us that now know to do better. You understand? So our people, guess what? They depend upon us. They depend on us. That's what we need to understand. That's why any type of foolishness is going to be shut down. Why? Because our people depend on us to show them how the laws of God are supposed to be applied. We must set the right example, even in our personal lives, to our people that don't know what we do, our people who see you living in, see you dress strangely, live strange, talk strange, and all that. Guess what? Those are the people that depend on your good example. You may understand that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, give me the book of John, chapter 13, verse 15. John 13, verse 15. Read that. John chapter 13, verse 15. Read. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. You see that thing? This is Christ speaking. He says, he gave us an example that we should do as he has done unto us. First Peter 2, 21. Read that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Mm -hmm. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that Christ left us an example that we should follow his steps. Read on. Who did no sin? You see that? He did not break God's laws in these last days. Go ahead. Neither was guile found in his mouth. You see that? Neither was guile found in his mouth. He was not bitter. Guess what law he applied? Get that in 1 Peter 2 verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice mm -hmm. and all guile and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speakings. 
So he put these aside. He put malice, guile, hypocrisy, envy, evil speaking aside. Go ahead. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. You see that thing? That spiritual growth, that increase in wisdom and understanding. The reason why he had all that is because what? All of these things, he had to put them away. That's the same example we must follow. Okay? So now, watch this. So far, we dealt with what? We dealt with your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. So these are the first three pillars of what? Discipline. Your thoughts, your words, which will become your action. So the only way to be able to deal with that, you need the spirit of discipline, which is the Holy Spirit. You need the spirit of discipline to deal with that. Discipline will help you to deal with your thoughts, your words, the things you say, your tongue, and guess what? Your, your actions, because all of that is a domino effect. You understand? The things you think become your words, your words become your actions. Okay, so I'm going to end the class right there because this is part one of the series. Okay, I'm going to do part two, Lord's will. I'll do part two. We're going to deal with habits, character, and destiny. Habits, character, and destiny. Those are the three, those are the three pillars that are left in this series. Okay, the spirit of discipline. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. These do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For his cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. 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 Praise.